He played football for me in Pop Warner level. And then he played football for me in high school. Kylo Quinn played for the Knicks. Oh, snap. I didn't know that. That's right. Kylo Quinn played for me. Wow. So, uh, there's a, there's a I've coached not only NFL players, I've coached NBA players, too. <laughs> oh, we can say that. <laughs> we can say hey, that. Listen. And Kylo Quinn was on, I, he played for me, Bayside Raiders, as, as, as a youth player. And there was another NFL player on his team, Daryl Whiting, who ended up going to Florida Division One, And then he, he got, uh, spent a year in the pros or whatever. So that, that was a really talented team. And those two kids were like big towers. And you know, I, I, I always told Kyle back then, you can play football. I know you love basketball, but your football will improve your basketball game and vice versa. Okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah different things that, that, that complement each other. No, that's absolutely true because there's a deep, deep, deep correlation between basketball and football. And me speaking for myself, I was a quarterback and a point guard. So being able to just mentally observe things, get in, you, you, you dissect the game differently. So, you know, being a quarterback and being a point guard are not too different from each other. Yo, um, I do want to swing it over to Zach Hayes real quick. Yo, Zach, man, talk to me about, you said you play basketball and football. Talk to me, brother, what's up? Me? Yeah, what's, what, what's your, what, what's your, uh, you're going to play in both basketball and football? Uh, they give me two different perspectives, but they help me in each sport. Um, playing football helps me, like, earn better accuracy in basketball. And throwing helps my jump shot more because it gives me more strength. Yeah, that's true. Word. When you play football, it makes you fearless going to the hole in basketball, right? You can, you can drive that mm -hmm. line, drive, drive that lane with no fear. Yeah, I like to say he's there. For, for, for those of us that are <laughs> that that do play football and basketball, the same, you know, it's almost like yeah, it, it takes away the fear of you going to the lane, right, in basketball, but it also puts something in you that makes you want to inflict the pain. <laughs> Yo, yo, there's, <laughs> yo, there's a saying that you could take a uh, you could take a football player that doesn't know anything about basketball and put him on the court, and he will give you at least five, five, and five. But you could take a basketball player and put him on a football court. I mean, on a football field, and it's a good chance he'll be like, "Nah, this sport ain't for me." <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, to be fair, unless he's Antonio Gates. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> LeBron James, because clearly he did both. We got Allen Iverson who did both. Yeah. Charlie Ward, man. Charlie Ward, ain't he a high school? Yeah. That's crazy, right? Charlie Ward is brilliant. That's insane. Charlie Ward. And he was a little guy. Yeah. yeah. And he was a little guy. Right. And he's one of the last things to see the finals. Mm. Did Charlie Ward go to the finals? He did. 
it's, it's, it's two different worlds in that respect. <laughs> All right, so Coach Wolf, real quick, I know there was some things that you wanted to cover too. Was there anything that uh that you wanted to weigh in on, real quick? Um, no, just with, with, with the young man, just uh, keep doing what you do. Uh, like I said, remember that you know there'll always be a village around you. Take advantage of that, and you know, we love and support the kids. And the only thing I wish is that you know we, we just get more of a community behind all these kids where. It's more of a societal thing where we should have government partnering to make sure that we have more high school fields accessible to these children. Community should have a team, baseball team. They should all have paid players. They should all have an infrastructure where you know the the officials are paid, the uh, board members for for each team are, are, are paid. And, you know, if, if we can do this for corporations, we can do this for the love of our kids. This is all to make our children better. This is to make, you know. Quality. To bring quality. Yeah, who, who's, who's more important in investing you know, than our children? There is nobody, right? Sure we don't have to do that with our kids. Why do we do all these things? It's for our kids. Right. right. So, you know, let, let, let's do that. Where everybody's involved in, you know, that, that cop that's out there, he's on the coaching staff. He's he, he's involved with, with these kids. He, he's part of it, so he feels loved and he returns that love. You know, we, we, we can all do this together, but everybody has to chip in. Like I said, those corporations, Amazon, that ain't paying no taxes, you need to tax, get your behind tax and pay them for these kids. Hey,
said that it reminded me of, of uh, um, like I have the NBA app on my phone, so I get the alerts and they're saying, um, it said something about LeBron's return to the I wonder what's that, what's that still be like? And then I remember there's not going to be fans in the stands. I would love to see, like when I when I look at the sports and I look at the games, football, football. From your cap is is a element, right? Right. So now we don't have that. It takes a little bit of aspect of the game. So now that James Harden is in Brooklyn, I want to see James Harden go back to Houston, and I want to, I want that crowd energy from my couch. Many different personalities mesh and come together. Like I said, they come for different reasons. Some come to be spectacular athletes. Some come for the camaraderie. You know, some come for the love. There are many different reasons because football is the game of life. Okay, right. let's first understand that football is the game of life. Oh, break that down a little bit. How, how does how does that for somebody like Dylan in the back, who's just a youngin, or you know, Jack like, Hayes, just a youngin. They, you know, they may not understand what that means. How do you explain that to a kid? Well, I, let's put it this way. When you get on the football field and coach is yelling at you and screaming at you and telling you, hey, son, you know, I want you to run extra laps. And you're like, oh, geez, he's picking on me. 
or this or that. No, coach is not picking on you. Coach is just trying to get you in shape, and coach sees something special in you. And coach wants to get the most out of you. So all he's trying to do is to motivate you. You've got to understand in life, this is why football is the game of life. People are going to come at you in different ways to get basically the same thing out of you. But not everybody has the same approach. People have different approaches. You just have to be smart enough to figure out what it is they're trying to get out of you and for you to get the best out of yourself. That's true. That, that you know, so most of the time, coaches see the potential before the players even see the potential. So that is the reason why coaches wouldn't ride somebody, you know, that hard to pull the best out of them. Do you do you have any um I know, you know, coaching some players even though they have all the talent, sometimes their attitude sucks. How do you deal with something like that? Well, well, it, it depends. Um a, a kid a kid is a kid. Um, right. let, let's begin there. And any kid that I coach, I, I first of all have to love them because they they're playing for me. You could be anywhere else in the world, but you're here with me. Right. Okay? That makes you special to me. Uh-huh. Okay. So, you know, we, yeah. Yes, absolutely. So um let's let's go into the importance of just being a student athlete. Like, you know, you touched on a little bit about how the scholarship is really the prize, you know, but it's they say it's they say it's easy to get there, but it's hard to stay there. So as a student athlete, you know, what are some of the, the biggest things that um, you know, some of the biggest challenges that an athlete might face having to deal with, let's say, the 10th grade and being a starting quarterback on JV? Well, student athlete, it's you. It's kind of almost like not so much so that you're paying dues for what you're doing because guess what? The dues that you're paying, you're paying for yourself. You're investing in yourself. You're not investing in anybody else. The time that you're you call yourself, oh, I'm under stress. You know, I'm doing extra push-ups and doing extra working out. I'm putting extra time into the classroom. I got to stay up late and study. I want to watch this thing on TV. I want to do my gaming. But darn, I got to study and, and I got to get better grades. Guess what? You know who's, who it's all benefiting? You. That's and right. You don't, you don't understand it, but it takes a village and everybody around you is showing you love. Sometimes it's just tough love. But at That's the end right. Of the day, at the end of the day, it's to make you a better person. That's absolutely right. Um, Uncle Mark, you want to weigh in? No, nah, I'm just saying, preach, brother Paul, preach. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 All right, so let's so let's let's change gears real quick, man. Let's talk about that game, those two games yesterday. So we got Tom Brady on one side, we got Brother Mahomes on the other side, like how you know, talk talk to me about how you felt about that Bucks game first, and then we'll dig into Pat Mahomes after. Okay. Um, well, it was nice to see Tom Terrific do do his thing. Um, you got to give credit to, you know, where, where it's due. That the, everybody said it was all about Belichick, and Brady's in the Super Bowl. That's true. Right? That's just so, a fact. Know, I'm, gonna give, I'm gonna give credit where credit is due. It doesn't take mm -hmm. anything away from Bill Belichick, though, because Belichick yeah, has a team that he normally does this year. But he will come back. He's done it without Brady. So he's proved yes. already that he doesn't need Brady, just like Brady doesn't need him. They're great people that came together and were great together. Now they're great apart. That's true. Yeah, that, word. That, that's how I feel about that. But um, at the end of the day, Patrick Mahomes, when all is said and done, we'll rewrite every record book in history. Woo! Bar none. Woo! Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. At the end of the day, if that young man stays healthy, he will rewrite every record book in history. I've never seen a quarterback at his level ever. That, that's yes, all I have to say. And I, I'm not gushing about him, but <laughs> that dude is no joke. <laughs> I that kid is the truth, game. man. That's, you know, that's, that's the truth. Um, anybody else see that Tampa game last night? Yeah, yeah. What you what you thought about it, man? How did you feel about it? Well, I thought what every good coach believes in defense wins what? Championship. Championship. That's right. <laughs> and that and what happened yesterday when Tom Terrific threw three interceptions? The defense came through. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Defense came through, yeah. man. 
So my main man Dylan, you over there in a the football jersey, man. How, did you see the games yesterday? Yeah. Yo, how'd you feel about him? Talk to me. Um, I kind of wanted the Packers to win. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad at him. I expected the Packers to win. Ah, you're a cheesehead, Dylan? Yeah. Packers fan. All right. Well, man, you know, that, that bad man, he hopefully got another couple seasons in him. Maybe next year or the year after that. Zach Hayes, did you, did you catch the game yesterday? No, I didn't see the game. I saw the one with the Bills and the um, uh, the the Chiefs. Chiefs. Yeah. Oh, baby, we all right. So, talk to me about that. How'd you feel about Patrick Mahomes? How'd you feel about his performance last it night? It was good. Good. No, uh, no, Patrick. Uh, right, that you hit the nail on the head. Just knowing Patrick, <laughs> Coach Wolfie, what you think about his performance? Oh man, it, it, it was outrageous. But what I loved most, forget about his performance, that was natural ability. They just came out on the field. The guy's hobbled, he's hurt, and he's still much the best player on the field. I wish running backs would carry the football as if they were a linebacker. Oh, that's big. I wish quarterbacks would. I wish quarterbacks would always operate on the field as if they were the coach. I wish linebackers would. I wish linebackers would always take their first step towards the line of scrimmage. Mm, I wish offensive linemen would. I wish offensive linemen would always block the pancakes. Uh, I wish defensive coordinators would. I wish defensive coordinators would spend time and, and really read an offense and study the players, not just the plays. Uh, I wish referees would. I wish referees would all have and do mostly have integrity and love for the game that just shines through and nothing comes before that okay 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 i wish the ncaa would pay the players pay the play give them that money i wish the nfl would hire more coaches of color uh i wish the fans would he's back in the stands Ah. <laughs> I wish my mom would <laughs> be on this broadcast right now. Last <laughs> but not least, I wish I could. I wish I could always be there for every kid that needs me. Ah, uh, give it up one time for Coach. Yeah. All right, so real quick, two people I want to introduce from our past. My main man, Naquan Mitchell, he was here a couple weeks ago. And another person that's very dear to me is my main man, Matt from Stony Brook, also known as Staten Island's Headhunter. I see you, my brain. Shocked <laughs> 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 crazy you heard Staten Island. <laughs> so, Mac, you're new to the show, man. I got to throw you right in the fire. I want you to finish these statements, all right? Um, all right, I'm ready. All right. I wish running backs would. Damn, truck, truck players. Uh, I wish, uh, I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm all over the place. It's been a long day. <laughs> nah, it's all good. That's, that's where it's supposed to be. I wish quarterbacks would. Oh, tape yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, so let's jump right in, man. Getting get back to my championships. Yes, yes, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to in couple, couple, well, all right, couple, couple, uh, we won't mention the back to back to back championship. For the yes, we will. Time. Okay, all right, so we will. But uh, the, those, those were uh, epic teams. Um, those teams had an undefeated team in there. I'm talking, these kids were just outrageous as far as talent. Um, I, I can't even really take any credit for that. Those kids were just, like I said, on some next level. They went and did their thing. It was a matter of just managing more so than coaching that team because they were just so very talented, which, which is a whole different side of coaching, you know, in, in and of itself. All right. So that, that was wonderful. And then I had my own organization, the New York Knights, uh, which was really, really great organization. We produced one NFL player out of there. Uh, Rashad Coward, he's playing for the Chicago Bears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Some pros out here. You know, it's not like uh, 
we we don't do this for nothing, all right? Right. We, because we love the kids, and more importantly, why we do it is because football is an.